towing heavy loads and manually selecting gears in an automatic. Generally a bad idea, but not everyone agrees because the world is full of geniuses. <laughs> Just ask Dunning and Kruger. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their brand new cars. <laughs> yes. Hit me up on the website. Firstly, re-automatic gearboxes. It disagree with your comment, re not using the gears. In my experience, using the gears to firstly slow down, saving brakes for when you really need them, and pre-selecting a low gear to hold the power band on steep inclines before starting the ascent and slowing, down saves momentum and stress in the vehicle. Secondly, some advice. I have read on forums that you shouldn't tow in fifth gear, i.e. overdrive. I cannot think of a reason this would be a problem, but am interested in your thoughts. Well, Lockie, thank you so much for that respectful disagreement and question. Incidentally, disagreeing with me is absolutely allowed. As someone with a PhD in sociopathy, I don't actually give a shit if you agree with me or not. I won't even spend a nanosecond pondering it. It never even occurs to me to question how people feel about these reports. I mean, come on. Just for context, okay, this is a comment from my recent heavy towing report, which was representative of a whole bunch of comments and questions that people made, okay, and I've wanted to address them for some time. It's in three parts, okay. A, using the transmission as a substitute for the brakes, generally, and B, holding the vehicle in the so-called power band on ascents, and C, why overdrive might be a bad idea when you are heavy towing. So let us do them in order, shall we? There's a novel approach. On descents, okay? I would retort that brakes are cheap. Cheap, okay? Pads are cheap. Rotors are even pretty cheap these days. Transmissions, on the other hand, are expensive. They're break the bank expensive in many cases. Transmissions on cars, not really designed as a substitute for brakes. Therefore, you gotta use the brakes to slow the vehicle to the desired speed, not the transmission. That's the general idea. When you're driving, you know, towing, not towing, just driving generally, cars, utes, SUVs, whatever. Certainly, you can hold the vehicle in a lowish gear and it will provide some small amount of retardation on a protracted descent, and that's not a bad idea. But just use the brakes first, okay, to get to the target speed, to do what they were designed to do by the manufacturer, which would be to slow the vehicle. Using the transmission as a substitute for the brakes is, uh, what's that word? It's fucking stupid. And yet, so many intellectually impoverished grey nomad dickheads drive as if this is their true calling, to avoid using the brakes at all costs by substituting the transmission. And to them, I would say, respectfully, you muppets. Look, if you are towing something, drive conservatively, especially if you are driving down a friggin' mountain, okay? But the trailer has its own brakes generally, and the system is quite robust if you drive conservatively and you don't abuse it. So, let's address ascending now, shall we, and pre-selecting a lower gear. If you want to save what Lockie here calls stress in the vehicle during ascents, then my simple advice would be do not tow anything, particularly anything heavy. Powertrain control modules are programmed by engineers who do this for a friggin' living to select the right gear for the prevailing load and demand, okay? Preemptively selecting what you call a power band is generally a poor strategy. So let's examine that. Let us say that you're on the highway and you get to a hill, as you do. 
load increases on the hill thanks to gravity or the component of gravity that's pushing you back down the hill anyway. You add a bit of throttle to compensate and the powertrain module does its mad voodoo arithmetic balancing the load from gravity versus demand which is essentially how hard you're applying the throttle and once it determines that you will get a better result in a lower gear it downshifts which is what a bunch of brainiac engineers designed it to do. So, simply out of deference to the Brainiacs and them understanding the system better than you, I'd let the transmission decide in the overwhelming majority of cases what gear it wants to be in. During ascents, let the computer do the friggin' thinking because it's been programmed to do that. If it needs to change back, it will. And finally, on overdrives and towing, you know, fifth and or sixth gear and heavy loads, gearboxes are about load and speed, okay? They're conversion systems for loads and speeds. Torque and speed, in other words. So first gear, I think you'd agree, gives you a lot of effort at the wheels at low speed for not all that much effort by the engine. It's all about mechanical advantage, right? Like a lever, only built a bit more complex than that. For example, on the flat with no trailer, you can generally just slip the clutch in first gear and get rolling using nothing more than the torque available to the engine at idle. Like with no throttle, you can still get going if you do it gently. Try doing that in fifth or sixth. Good luck with that. Because fifth or sixth gives you a lot less effort at the wheels because it's designed for speed. Less effort, more speed. That's how this works. Effort and speed are in inverse proportion to each other in powertrains, okay? Lots of effort goes with lower speed. Lots of speed goes with lower effort. Lower gears tend to be more robust, as in they're built more robustly, because they're transmitting a great deal of mechanical advantage. Higher gears, well, they tend to be less robust, in particular overdrives, because they're all about low load driving. So... You're doing 100 k's an hour with not much throttle unladen, okay? And then you add some heavy caravan, probably because you're, I don't know, not smart enough to fly somewhere in an aircraft and stay in a proper hotel like a civilised person. This report, of course, proudly sponsored by Resorts, the alternative to caravans for anyone with an IQ above the room temperature, even in degrees C. If you're thinking of buying a caravan, your upcoming suffering is entirely preventable. Help is available now. More information at fivestarhotties.com. Perhaps there is some appeal, which I have been thus far unable to divine, to taking a dump every evening three steps from the dining table in an acoustically transparent aluminium box, which has cost you 60 or 70 grand. Hashtag caravanning. Yes. You three keep eating. I'll just go and crack one off. And remember, mind your P's and Q's, because from there, I can hear everything you say. So... You end up taking your recent sewage collection on a sightseeing tour of this fine nation after the zombie lockdown lifts, obviously, and you might be doing 100 k's an hour. Lots of additional rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag now, of course, and it's all being pumped through fifth or sixth gears, which are not all that robust, typically, because they're just for cruising at light loads. That's what they've been designed to do. And then, because you think you know better than the Brainiacs who actually designed your vehicle, you will be in manual mode, because you know better, right? You are in charge. This is your ship, and you are the friggin' captain. 
and inevitably, you get to a slight incline, so you put your foot down on the throttle to compensate, and the hill gets a little steeper, and you put a little bit more foot down just to compensate again, and you're in the compensatory business, let's not forget. And the transmission is thinking, well, golly gee, Jim Bob, if only he would let me make the decisions here, I would have taken a bit of load off by knocking back to a lower gear several moments ago. But hey... Even if that transmission could speak, you would not listen because friggin' Napoleon, whatever. And eventually, over a period of time doing this, you know, knowing better, fifth or sixth gear inevitably just goes poopy in its trousers rather loudly. One memorable afternoon outside cell phone range, yes, of course. And then you are sitting on the side of the road with your lovely wife, who is entirely sympathetic to your shared predicament, as they often are, just the two of you. And, of course, your expensive aluminium sewage container, echo chamber, whatever, looking forlornly at the horizon where you can see unattainably enough dingo piss pass, which you have been striving to achieve, and cursing the vehicle manufacturer for getting the design so horribly, horribly wrong. It's almost poetic now that I think about it. Whereas your next door neighbour flew to Hamilton Island yesterday and he's presently mainlining Verve Click Co from the highly enhanced cleavages of a smorgasbord of in-house hotties, part-time Ming moles. And I bet he has no fucking idea of the joy he is missing out on which I guess is a roundabout way of saying if you want to drive with overdrive off when long-distance touring beyond you know, West Bumfuck or something, that's quite okay. One of the best ways to reduce load, however, load on the transmission, on the driveline generally, load on the friggin' cooling system, is just to drop back from 110 k's to about 90. That's going to cut aerodynamic drag by about 50%, and aeros are going to be like... I don't know, 50% of the total load at those speeds, so 25%-ish less load on the transmission, the cooling system, whatever, and 25-ish percent better fuel economy. All other things being equal. There's a revolutionary suggestion. P.S. Do not take advice from forums because they are rancid breeding grounds for the Dunning-Kruger effect. The dumber they are, the more prolifically they comment, typically. For towing, okay, if you must tow something, my general advice would be choose the right vehicle, load it conservatively, well below the gross vehicle mass, the aggregate trailer mass, and the gross combination mass limits, and leave the damn transmission in D for I'll make all the decisions, not you, for all but truly exceptional driving circumstances. And you should do that all the friggin' way to the airport. 